Hello everyone, welcome to this channel. My name is Ruben and today we are going to talk about PayPal. We will focus on seven things in this video. We will start with Capital Market Summary and then do a deep dive on this company. Capital Market Summary. At the day of the recording, PayPal Holdings is trading around 263 US dollars. PayPal has a market capitalization of approximately 308 billion with a price to earnings ratio of approximately 74. And regarding the recent news, PayPal announced to acquire a company called Curve to accelerate and expand its initiatives to support cryptocurrencies and digital assets. Besides that, on March 30, PayPal launched a checkout with cryptocurrencies and that's going to be a new feature which significantly expands the utility of cryptocurrencies. Let's now have a look at a clip from Venmo. Let's take it back to where this all started. Venmo was founded a decade ago by two former University of Pennsylvania students. He was visiting me in New York and didn't have his wallet, so I covered him for the whole weekend. And he wrote me a check to pay me back and we thought, this is silly, we should be using our phones to do this. It was later bought by Braintree for $26 million, not billion, million. Braintree was later bought by PayPal. Bill Reddy, CEO of Braintree at the time and now Chief Operating Officer at PayPal, is the man responsible for bringing the no-name app to mainstream fame. The name Venmo comes from uh, the Latin vendere and mobile and sort of bringing those two things together. We really wanted it to be the way people would pay for everything. Braintree's platform helped PayPal dive into mobile. Yeah, PayPal has been innovating at scale in 2020. They did numerous innovations such as QR code checkout, the buy now pay later service, they launched a Venmo credit card and the whole crypto thing with crypto buy, hold and sell on the app. During the Q4 2020 conference call from CEO Dan Schulman, he talked about the most surprising thing he has seen uh, so far. Crypto started off with a bang and just kept going and is continuing to go. But in a surprise winner, if I had the envelope, I would talk about buy now, pay later honestly. As surprising me most, to the upside. I, since I have been here, I have never seen a product launch with that kind of scale so quickly. So in other words, buy now, pay later is the biggest surprise from CEO. Yeah, the strategic initiatives for PayPal, if you look at the global pay later initiatives, it was launched in the second quarter of 2020 in the US and United Kingdom with no additional fees or interest for their customers that allow a seamless wallet integration. If you look at the Q4 2020 results, they have more than 750 million in revenue with 250k unique merchants approximately, 2.8 million unique customers and emergence with upstream uh, presentment of 14k yeah and now the digital currency initiatives uh, paypal launched the crypto uh, buy hold and sell experience in the united states in october in 2020 uh, cryptocurrencies include bitcoin bitcoin cash ethereum and litecoin uh, paypal has plans to expand it to venmo and select international markets in the first half year of 2020 one, what's very important here is that the total payment volume will not be recognized for cryptocurrency buy, hold and sell. Use case, the revenue will be recognized on a net basis within transaction revenue. And actually, customers who purchase cryptocurrencies, they have been logging into PayPal at a rate two times their login frequency prior to purchasing cryptocurrency. And this also allows for more engagement in the Venmo app. I think investors should really focus more on a top line growth because technology companies differ from companies in other industries and that they have at their disposal a seamlessly unlimited choice of high ROI uh, opportunity. For example, like PayPal has been investing in this buy now pay later capability and considering stocks in the space like Affirm or have to pay they trade at a forward sales multiple in excess of 30 right now and it should be clear that this is a very promising space i will give you three reasons why buy now pay later will be huge for paypal one paypal is well positioned to win in a rapidly growing market why is that because online purchases in the united states made using a buy now pay later service 
increased 215% year over year in January and February, according to data from Adobe. And this market is growing rapidly as more retailers offer this option and consumers, they really find this appealing amid economic uncertainty. Two is an opportunity to grow payment volume because the average card size for a checkout using the buy now pay later option is 18% larger than for orders the consumer pays for upfront. And three, lower transaction cost. So as buy now pay later becomes a bigger piece of PayPal's total payment volume, it should see its average transaction cost decline. And this means higher profit margin. Yeah, PayPal has been investing in fintech winners of tomorrow. Uh, you can see that here split between new strategic investments in the fourth quarter of 2020 and notable portfolio developments. If you look at strategic investments in the fourth quarter of 2020, you can think about Extent, which is a warranty startup, Modular, uh, that's a payment as a service platform, uh, Paxos is a blockchain infrastructure uh, for the cryptocurrencies that they offer, and uh, Taxbit for cryptocurrency tax software. Here is a figure of the top 10 mobile consumer finance applications in the United States by active users in 2019. And even in 2019 already, Venmo, which is from PayPal, was number one, followed up by Cash App from Square. And then the third place was for JP Morgan. Total payment volume for PayPal has been growing really rapidly, especially in 2020, Thanks to COVID-19, in the first quarter of 2020, they had a growth rate of 19% with a total payment volume of 191 billion. And in the last quarter, they actually achieved the highest uh, growth rate ever in PayPal's history with a growth rate of 36% with a total payment volume of 277 billion. And this growth is expected in 2021 and forward as well. Merchant services growth are outpacing eBay marketplaces. PayPal exited uh, December with eBay representing less than 6% of the total payment volume in the fourth quarter of 2020 versus 19% uh, compared to the fourth quarter in 2015. You can see that on the left, merchant services total payment volume in billions. In 2016, they had 300 and in 2020, they had 866 billion with a compound annual growth rate of 30%. Also, cross-border trade has been uh, growing rapidly with the fastest growing CBT categories such as fashion, cosmetics, gaming, auto parts, and home goods. Let's now listen to analyst Dan Dolaf about PayPal and its cryptocurrency bet. When we talk about cryptocurrencies um, at PayPal, what's in it for the company? I mean, is it the fact that maybe the company can extract fees from the conversion of cryptocurrencies or, or is it something else yeah thanks for having me always a pleasure so look i think the most important thing here for paypal it does two things the first thing it boosts engagement so the more often you're actually using the app you're looking at your bitcoin you are paying with your bitcoin you're more spending more time on the app and that's what we call the super app effect so you're going to be using the paypal app more and more often and then you're probably going to be getting other stuff so that's kind of the first step the second step is if a lot of people are going to use this then eventually, because PayPal charges the same for the merchant, but it doesn't have to pay Visa, MasterCard, or the banks, it might be able to increase their own margin. So it has like that sort of ripple effect of more usage super app, but also you know margin expansion if people use it and they don't have to pay the interchange, et cetera, to the banks. Yeah, so you look at PayPal on this latest news today. You look at the, the news yesterday from Visa. Uh, I realize that that's not Bitcoin. It's actually a U.S. dollar pegged coin there but in general looking uh, looking around the payments ecosystem right now is it safe to say that we're at an inflection point in terms of greater adoption of cryptocurrencies a, as an actual store of value use of value 100 percent. so it's it, it's become sort of it, it i would say brings bitcoin one step closer to becoming mainstream because now it's not just stored value it's actually value that you could use in a store, right? So it becomes it's that that change from store value to value you can use in a store. That's like the big thing. And you're seeing that in the price of Bitcoin. And, and you have a lot of people that are kind of betting on Bitcoin. You know, we hosted Kathy Wood a few weeks ago, and she's talking about Bitcoin being like 
going up and 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 becoming like mainstream. So I think that that um, uh, prophecy is being kind of fulfilled uh, over time, and we're seeing that coming to fruition right now. The CEO and CFO sold some shares recently. If we focus on CEO Daniel Schulman, he sold four percent of his stake on the 10th March of 2021 and still holds 238,000 shares. Yeah, regarding revenue of PayPal, this has been growing as well, especially in the fourth quarter of 2020, they had a growth rate of 23% with a total revenue of $6.1 billion. Yeah, let's now talk about operating leverage. We can see below that the volume-based expenses, which make up the majority of cost of goods sold for PayPal, have declined as a percent of revenue in the last quarter. Non-gap operating margin has increased by over 100 basis points. However, that hasn't led to a boost in gap operating margin because much of the improvement in non-gap operating income came from stock-based compensation. If you compare 2019 to 2020 with the earnings per share, then in 2020, non-GAAP earnings per share grew 31% for PayPal. The cash flow for the company is really good, and especially thanks to COVID-19, in 2020, the free cash flow was 5 billion, which is a 48% year-over-year increase. Now regarding the capital allocation, you can see that in the graph here, they make a distinction between CAPEX, also known as capital expenditures, stock repurchases, and acquisition and strategic investments. If we focus on 2020, in the fourth quarter of 2020, PayPal returned $265 million in capital to shareholders by repurchasing 1.3 million shares at an average price of approximately $199.43 per share. However, most of the money is still spent on acquisitions and strategic investments, and that's something I really like. And lastly, the opportunity and the risks. Well, the company keeps innovating into new areas, which we saw earlier. You can bank on uh, e-commerce. Buy now, pay later is the biggest growth driver. Many people think it's all about cryptocurrency that's uh, contributing to the revenue growth right now. That's also true. There is a positive digital wallet trend, which we didn't talk much about. Uh, you can bank on a cashless society. Venmo from PayPal is together with Cash App from Square, one of the market leaders. Like That's my opinion. I really believe that PayPal uh, has a place uh, as market leader in the future here. Uh, the company is relatively aggressive on acquisitions. That's also something that I like. There is a steady growth in active accounts and total payment volume. The company is making sufficient cash flow and this is also growing and something uh, that I didn't talk much about is GoPay in China. They have plans about that as well, but I leave that up to you. You can Google that. And also the risks, of course, one of the risks is losing eBay's business in 2021. There is still overall growth for the company because other top 15 marketplaces are growing six times faster so despite losing ebay's business paypal is still able to grow significantly and one of the other risks that i noted down was high price to earnings ratio however this is very common for growth stocks because this company is growing if you look at the price target from analysts they gave a price range between 310 and 350 us dollars I have the stock myself and I intend to keep it for at least three to five years. Thank you everyone for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and see you on the next company.